Uh, thank you very much, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Uh, very, uh, very happy to associate myself and this side of the House with the remarks the Right Honourable Lady made about Ukraine. Yeah. Democracies must stand together. Yeah. What is the government doing to bring down inflation? <laughs> well, well, Mr. Speaker, I think it's astonishing that. And first of all, can I welcome the Right Honourable Member <laughs> to his place? And many people might not know, Mr. Speaker, but the Honourable Member was the Minister for Growth when, under Liz Truss, inflation, <laughs> inflation was 11.1% of growth flatlines, so we're doing much better than he did. Well, the truth is that this, well, actually, thanks to the honour, I'd like to thank the Honourable Lady for her standard charm. A, uh, the truth is. This government isn't doing anything to bring down inflation. This government is stoking inflation. First, we had above inflation pay rises for the unions. Then, we had a budget which the OBR said would increase inflation. First, we had above inflation pay rises for the unions. Then, then we had a budget which the OBR said was going to push up inflation. This morning, we had city economists, yeah. real economists, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> saying that next year inflation would hit 3%. Does the right honourable lady agree that this government's decisions mean higher inflation for working people? Yeah. 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 Mr. Speaker, I'll ask the honourable gentleman 11.1% or 3%? Yeah. Yeah. We've already talked about Ukraine, Mr. Speaker. It was Ukraine and COVID that drove up inflation. This government is doing it to the British people. High tax, high inflation, low growth, low reform. There's a word for that, Mr. Speaker. It's Starmerism. Yesterday, like many honourable members on this side of the House, uh, I spoke to farmers from across the United Kingdom, some of them families who farmed their land for centuries, elderly men in tears, children worried about their parents, all of them worried that their way of life is about to be destroyed. What would the Right Honourable Lady like to say to them? Well, first of all, Mr Speaker, we are absolutely committed to our British farmers, and that is why We've committed £5 billion to the farming budget over the next two years. That's the largest ever amount for sustainable food production in the UK. And it's alongside £60 million, Mr Speaker, to support those affected by extreme wet weather and over £200 million to tackle disease outbreaks. His party couldn't even get the money out the door for farmers, failing to spend over £300 million on farming budgets. The farmers know they ruined it for them, and that's why we're in government and they're not. Well, perhaps the right honourable lady thinks that everyone came to London yesterday to thank the government. <laughs> Let's look at the facts. A typical mid-sized 360-acre family farm in the constituency of my right honourable friend for Thirsk and Morton. They've uh, spoken to their accountant. Their new liability because of this government is half a million pounds. That's 12 years' worth of profit. When this generation passes away, that farm will become totally unviable, and it's just one of thousands and thousands of similar farms. It's clear the government hasn't got its facts right. The Central Association for Agricultural Valuers, the real experts in this field, say so. The NFU says so. They're shortly to publish a report showing that 75% of all commercial farms will fall above the threshold. If the government isn't, if the government isn't going to reverse this terrible policy, will the right honourable lady at least commit that there will be no further increases to inheritance tax and no further reductions to agricultural property relief or business property relief in this parliament? Well, Mr Speaker, he talks about the facts, and I absolutely stand by the figures the government has set out. And the vast, the vast majority of estate owners will be totally unaffected. He wants to talk about the figures, Mr Speaker. I will be crystal clear. The vast majority of estate owners will see no change and pay no tax 
on land passed on valued at uh, one million pound. Couples can pass on three million pound, Mr. Speaker, tax free, and those above the thresholds will pay only half the normal rate and can pay over t- ten years interest free. This is just another part of the budget that's unravelling, Mr. Speaker. Everyone, everyone here, and all the farmers at home. All the farmers at home will have heard there was no guarantee there. We know what that means. They're coming back for more. And even if the Honourable Lady had made a promise today, it wouldn't have been worth a fig. We know that the Environment Secretary, before the election, promised the farmers this wouldn't happen. Labour promises get broken. Let's put all of this into context. The Treasury Treasury says the family farms tax will raise, on average, £441 million a year. The Treasury also says that the public sector pay rises the Government announced in July will cost £9.4 billion a year. That's over 21 times as much. Why does the Government think that above inflation pay rises for the trade unions are worth so much? Thank you, Mr Speaker. I think it's an audacity for the honourable gentleman to stand there and suggest in some way that Labour broke promises or raised taxes. Honourable gentlemen, it was his government that raised taxes to the highest level for a generation. It, w- it was his government that crashed the economy, that saw inflation rise to 1.1% and grow flatline. It was his government that spent the reserves three times over. I'll take no lessons from the honourable gentleman. Alex Burkhart. I understand why the right honourable lady doesn't want to ask que- answer questions about the terrible choices the government have made. Yeah. It's because the truth is ugly. The truth is that this is a punishment meted out to people who don't vote Labour. It's the same punishment meted out to parents who send their children to private schools. It's the same punishment meted out to the owners of small businesses terrified about national insurance contributions. And it's the same punishment meted out to pensioners who can't afford to pay their fuel this winter. Isn't it the truth, Mr Speaker, that if you don't vote Labour, they don't care about you? Yeah.